without further ado, let me welcome uh, um, Director General uh, Veronica Gaffey of DG Digits up on stage to open the second part of our event today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and thank you for the invitation to address you on open source driving the digital decade. So I would like to start by recalling why at the Commission we are enthusiastic about open source. There are obvious reasons. It's one of the key tools to transform digital public services in line with the digital decade objectives. It provides cost-effective solutions, promoting transparency, interoperability, and standardization within and among government agencies. It stimulates innovation through collaboration, offering flexibility and customization, and by integrating open source principles, EU institutions and governments can advance our vision of an inclusive and resilient digital society, accelerating digital transformation, and ensuring equi equitable access to its benefits. I also see two other motives for the use of open source. First, code reuse is a bottom-up process simply because it's practical. Our developers turn to open source components when putting together software solutions. It's a mindset for sharing and collaborating. And this has been one of my priorities since I came to DD Digit, to really push collaboration within Digit and reuse of solutions within Digit and sharing with the outside world as well. We can trace back this leveraging of open source by our developers at least to over 30 years ago. At that time, colleagues at the Joint Research Center worked with peers at the European Space Agency and its US counterpart, NASA, to collaboratively develop open soft software to process satellite data. This was used to look for changes in vegetation and to monitor sea surface temperatures, checking for anomalies and pollution. Already in the mid-1990s, the Commission's very first web pages were developed using open source with the help of the same researchers. And there's a second reason for the Commission to be a major player in terms of open source, and that's because it fits closely to the values and goals of the European Union. We are making it easy for others, other public services, companies, as well as citizens, to reuse our solutions. We share our software to work together with others on better interoperable services. And by making this software publicly available, it can be studied and inspected. And this is how we build trust and accountability. As a result, open source is at the foundation of our digital landscape. The other day, my colleagues sampled our internal cold repositories looking for the use of the well-known data transport software utility CURL that is made primarily in Stockholm, we found that CURL is used by hundreds of Commission software development projects. We have more examples. Europa, the Commission's main external website, is built using the Drupal content management system. Most of the Commission data center services, servers are Linux-based. Most of the building blocks funded by the Digital Europe program are available as open source, and some of these are used widely by companies and public services. Simple, the secure middleware cloud platform, is one of the latest open source building blocks that is funded by Digital Europe. Simple will be one of the key components to support data access and interoperability among European data spaces. In the past few years, NGI, next generation of internet, supported the development of an internet built on trust, security, and inclusion, and has contributed to the funding of over 1,000 open source researchers and developers. This will continue under Horizon Europe. Also, actions funded through our Interoperable Europe chapter, part of the Digital Europe program, are producing open source software or supporting open source, 
such as our online uh, survey service, EU Survey, our toolbox for drafting legislative texts, LEOS, and the European Union Public Licence, which is growing in popularity for projects by EU public services as well as by companies. This involvement is why the current Commission strategy for open source, Think Open, guides us to make it easier for our developers by establishing a working culture based on the principles of open source and to make it tangible how open source is aligned with the political priorities and activities of our digital strategy. With the strategy, we created an open source program office, or OSPO, to ensure its implementation. OSPO actions include encouraging our software development teams to share their code internally, and this is starting to bear fruit. Since 2021, the number of internal projects visible to all our developers has almost quadrupled. This is resulting in code reuse, and it reassures and motivates colleagues and teams when they can see others are using the same components. A second main action in the strategy is to make it easier um, to share our code as open source. We reviewed and simplified our internal processes to substantially reduce the time to share code as open source from around six months to now an average of a month and a half. At a similar conference to this one in Brno in Czechia in September 2022, I announced code.europa.eu, the code development platform for open source projects shared by the institutions of the European Union. Today, this platform has 2,400 contributors collaborating on 500 open source projects from the Commission and other institutions and agencies. Code.europa.eu is beginning to work as we had hoped. Citizens are submitting fixes for documentation, such as in the LEOS project I mentioned earlier, the tool for drafting legislation, and they are helping others by answering questions, as in the VECTO project, which is a software used to model CO2 emissions and fuel consumption by trucks and buses. Since 2021, other public services have started to recognize our actions as a model, or at least as a good source of inspiration. In 2021, the EC OSPO and the then newly created OSPO in the city of Paris began to discuss alignment and collaboration. Since then, other member states have also created OSPOs and OSPO-like units. The EU OSPO network now includes 13 organizations from eight member states and the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN. So the Commission has also been working with the broader open source community through its open source observatory, OSOR, for more than 15 years. OSOR supports EU public services in using open source by keeping them up to date with the developments and sharing best practices. I hope that some of you had the chance to attend the OSOR anniversary conference which took place last November. We had great speakers and the conference gave recognition to different open source projects. In parallel, the European Parliament continues to support the Commission efforts on open source. That started in 2015 with a pilot to have an inventory of our open source use with the overarching goal to improve IT security. In 2021, we started working with the European Parliament on a new pilot project to develop an EU-wide catalogue of open source solutions. We launched a minimum viable product of the first catalogue of open source solutions, listing about 500 solutions from Italy and Germany. In the follow-up to this pilot, we will continue to promote collaboration on open source in public services. My services are currently working on the renewal of the Commission's open source strategy, and the goal is to increase our maturity when adopting open source practices and values, and intensify collaboration with member states. The momentum is being created and supported and pushed with the adoption of the Inter Interoperable Europe Act, as well as other um, European Union policies that impact upon open source software development, such as the Cyber Resilience Act, 
the Product Liability Directive and the AI Act. And if I can say a few words on the Interoperable Europe Act, because it's one that was promoted by my own DG, um, you will agree with me that open source is a practical tool to achieve interoperability for making different systems work together in the digital world. I believe that in the next few years, open source will become even more visible in European public services thanks to the Interoperable Europe Act. The Act will make it easier for public sector organisations in the EU to work together through a cross-European interoperability governance structure. It will require public services to work together across borders and to carry out mandatory assessments for cross-border data exchange services. And it will help them collaborate on digital projects and to share information and solutions supporting digital transformation. The Commission will propose guidelines for sharing and reusing interoperability solutions among member states and public sector bodies. The guidelines, developed collaboratively with member states, will cover organisational, technical and legal aspects aligning with the Interoperable Europe Act. The regulation is the first of its kind in the EU and it will apply to all public administrations in the EU, EU bodies, institutions and agencies. So it applies to ourselves as much as it applies to public services in the member states. Over time, we believe it will help make data exchanges, IT platforms and digital services in the EU, EU work together smoothly. Here, open source will be a, an essential enabler and we will support and monitor, monitor the development of open source interoperability solutions for public services. In conclusion, we believe open source software is essential to achieving the EU's digital decade goals by promoting innovation, efficiency, transparency in public services and driving the vision of a thriving digital economy and society. And I go back to what I started with. Most importantly, I think it's a way that we can work together to achieve our European Union objectives and goals. Thank you very much. Thank you.